it sounding grace to call men of God dad or father? Even those who are young than me demand me to call him father so that his grace may flow in me. Okay, I know your first scripture where you're calling that is Matthew where it says call no man father on the earth. Call no man your father on the earth. There is one father which is God. Why did Jesus say that? The pretext and posttext. He was referring to false prophets and false teachers and Pharisees. So he now said, call none of these false prophets, false teachers and Pharisees your father. It doesn't mean you shouldn't call somebody your father. Because Jesus had an earthly father and he recognized him as a father. Okay? Brother Paul had a son and he called Timothy my son whom I have begotten in the gospel. So who is a father? Is the word pata in the Greek. Pata means a source, a nourisher, a sustainer. Which means a father is the person that is responsible for your doctrinal persuasion. Father is not a title. Father is responsibility. If I am responsible for your doctrinal persuasion, I become your father. Not as a title, but as a responsibility. When you call me father, you are reminding me. You are the one I am following. You are the one feeding me. Feed me well. It's not it's, it's a function. It's not a title. So you don't go around calling people father. Because Paul said, do you have 10,000 instructors? You only have one father. You should stay with one person as your doctrinal persuasion so that you are not confused. And you must be able to identify who is responsible for my doctrinal persuasion. Who is building doctrine into me and bringing ministry out of me. That is my father. It's responsibility. Are we together here? So don't follow those people who say, don't call anybody your father. Only God is your father. No. God can't be the only person your father. You have an earthly father. You have an earthly mother. And you call them as such. So same thing, you are also a spiritual father. Somebody who is feeding you, growing you, and overseeing your life. Is it, is it clear here? That's Bible. That's doctrine. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Together with that, there's, uh, there's a problem that is... Uh, in Kenya mostly. Okay. Uh, I don't know if it's in Nigeria. Okay. Whereby we have... Okay, it starts from there. Now, mostly young preachers, they have been, uh, they have been like forced to call some um, maturely elder for, pastor... For influence and connection. Yes. And, and therefore, you have to sub subscribe. And be paying tight. And pay tight. It's a transaction. And if you don't do that, they cut off... It's a transactionary relationship. And it's on biblical. It's not biblical. Yeah, that's that's what I want to I say. I know what you're talking about. Yes. It's in Nigeria big time. <laughs> you know, it's this mentality. I used to be there. I know everything. See, that's why they don't like me. Because I know everything they know. And I know what they don't know. So they don't like me because I can expose all the things they are doing. But they cannot reveal what I know. That's the problem. Because in Nigeria, we have a forum where all fathers gather. And I'm a member. And that forum, you can't join until you are invited. There are just about 120 of us. The whole of Nigeria. I'm a member of that forum. And when I started preaching the message of Christ, I was invited by the fathers. Whoever you know is a father in the forefront in the Nigerian ministry. They're all there. And I'm among them. So when I started preaching this message and it was going all over Nigeria, they became agitated. So they summoned me. They summoned me. They wrote me later that I should come and explain this nonsense I'm preaching. And their intent were, was that they wanted to label me nationally a heretic. So I prayed and I prepared a 440 page defense of what I preached. The coordinator of the forum is very close to me. Okay, because he too preaches the grace message. If you know Bishop Mike Okonko. Okay, it's close to me. So Bishop Mike called me and said, 
Abel, how are you preparing to face these guys? I said, don't worry, sir. It's, it's, it's not an issue at all. There are more serious issues than that. So I said, uh, so what are you going to do? I said, he said, how many hours will you need? I said, two, three hours will be fine. I said, then I said to him, I've prepared a 440-page paper. He said, no, Abel, they will sleep. <laughs> it's too big. <laughs> so I compressed it to an executive summary of about 40 pages. And then we came that night. Everybody was seated. And I stood up before all of them. I mean, whoever is who, from Pastor Adeboye down, they were all there. So I began with principles of Bible interpretation. Then I went into the concept of grace from Genesis. I traveled down to the epistles. When I finished, I said, this is what I go around the world preaching. Any questions? Any questions? So one of the fathers stood up. Dr. Dambina, very elderly man, maybe 70. Supposing a man is committing fornication and is born again and the trumpet sounds, will he go to heaven? So all of them said, answer, answer, answer. They thought, they thought that was a serious question. So I stood up and I said to them, in Bible teaching, there are no yeses or noes. There is explanation. So let's go through scriptures. I began to throw the scriptures one by one and one by one and one. When I finished, I said, that's the position of scriptures. I rest my case. And the man said, no, I need a yes or no. <laughs> so Bishop Mike stood up and said, you need a yes or no? Let me answer you. If a man is truly born again, has the Holy Spirit, and gets into fornication mistakenly, and the trumpet sounds. He's in heaven one time. But a man that is born again won't go around committing fornication. So after all of that, one of the main fathers stood up and said, that presentation, if I had the powers, I would have given you a PhD for just this presentation. Then he said, well, we adopt this into the minutes. Every one of you fathers, go and study it. Let the Holy Spirit open it up to you and you can teach it in your churches. There's nothing false in this message. Let's go for dinner. And they wrote the minutes. I have copies of it. Do you understand? Yes. So, the message of Christ is critical. And uh, it will attract all those kind of things. But you must be able to stand your grounds. And then in the Nigerian church, what young preachers do is if they see that you have influence, you have crowd, you have national acceptance, they now see you as a father. That's canal. That's totally canal. And that is why when you get to those fathers, they will now equate you by the weight of your tight. Your tight will determine your position in the relationship. Those who bring big, big tight are the ones that will sit close and will relate close. If your tight is small, you are at the bottom of the line. It's foolish. Real fatherhood is doctrine. Doctrine. Are we understanding? It's not popularity. It's doctrine. And some young ministers think when you come under a senior minister, you can climb his shoulders to fly. You don't need anybody's shoulders to fly. If you preach Christ well, Christ will open the world for you. You don't need anybody's shoulder. The gospel is a standalone. If you stay with it, it will open up doors for you. Am I communicating at all? Am I communicating? At all? It's very important. And relationship in ministry should not be money. We are not politicians. We are not business people. Relationship must be beyond money. It must be doctrinal. Yes. Now, when I am feeding you doctrinally, it is in order for you to honor me. But I do not tell you how to honor me. I don't demand for it. Let it come out of gratitude because you are getting a lot. And you want to appreciate my labor. Not that I demand for it as a condition for the relationship. That's no more a relationship. That's a transaction. Please, it's important. If you're a young preacher, don't let anybody mess you up. You know, take these things very serious. Amen.